Hello, as you come in, go ahead and share this video, invite somebody on. Thank you for joining while in Root Empowerment Destiny Travelers. As you come in, say hello. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know um, your name. If you uh, want us to see your comments, you're going to have to actually give StreamYard, which is the streaming platform that we use to post to Facebook. You're going to have to give them access so that your comments can be seen. So I know a lot of times people comment, but I can't actually see those comments. So as you come on, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Um, today, the Lord has given me such a powerful uh, message that I want to share um, this week concerning a fatherless church. And the Lord has been dealing with me about this for some time. So I thought it was high time that I actually speak on this and deliver this message to those that would hear um, the exhortation and in, in the um, teaching that the Lord has um, given me concerning the fatherless church that we are experiencing today. As you come in, go ahead and say hello. Let me know where you are watching from. My name is Sherry Downs. For those that do not know me, and I am a prophetess of God and called of God, and God has ordained me to come on Facebook and to share the messages and the empowerment and the encouragement and the equipping and these teachings to the body of Christ for his glory. So I also want to thank you for um, the support, those that help support the ministry that I can um, be able to do these lives and continue the work that God has given me. And those that send hearts and stars and likes and shares, all of those good things that will support what God has called me to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now that we got those formalities out of the way, go ahead and share this message to your timeline, to your networks, to your friends, share it, like it, Follow the page if you have not done so yet. So today um, we're just going to be talking about the fatherless generation and what that looks like and what God is saying to the body today. Let me go ahead and try to share this to my page as well. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you for your patience. As I share this, video, <laughs> as I too partake and share this video. All right. Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love, your kindness. It is for your mercies that we are not consumed. Great is your faithfulness to us, Father. Thank you, Father, for all things that you do. You do all things well. So we just bless you, Father, for understanding. I pray for those that would hear this message live and for those that will watch the replay. I pray, Father, that they would receive this word in the spirit that it is given. I pray, Father, that you would um, illuminate the truth, that you would give understanding that you would give insight and that you would give clarity in Jesus name. So the Lord began to deal with me. And this has been for some time now that the Lord has been dealing with me about a fatherless church, a fatherless generation and what it looks like and what it means to be begotten of God. Oftentimes when people come into the body of Christ, they are coming into um, well, they should be coming into Christ. They should be having an experience or an encounter with Jesus Christ that causes their lives to be transformed in such a way that they experience a come follow me moment. When we look at the scriptures and we look at all of those that encountered Jesus, they begin to encounter him in such a way that it, they had a come follow me moment. What does that mean? When we experience Jesus 
in a real and tangible way. We have an experience with him that marks us and we want to follow him. There's an invitation that comes when we experience Christ. We look at the disciples when they met Jesus as he was calling them. They had an experience that transformed them, that captivated them, and they wanted to follow Christ. Paul, who had a, a road of Damascus experience, had such an encounter with Jesus that marked him, that changed him, that he changed his whole theology. Jesus began to teach him just like he did the other disciples. And he began to follow Christ and run for Christ to the end of his life. And many others throughout the decades, the centuries have had encounters with Christ that marked them, that changed them radically to the degree that they were transformed and they had a message that they carried. They had an experience or an encounter that they shared of this transformation. So oftentimes in the body of Christ, we um, disciple people or we bring people into um, the church, but are we really um, introducing them to Christ or are we introducing them to um, our systems, our ways of doing things? Are we introducing them to our fog machines, our um, aesthetics, our atmosphere that we have created, or are we really following Christ to the degree that people are, are having an authentic experience with the Christ of the Bible. So when we are when we are introducing people into the body of Christ, when we are offering Christ to sinners, when we're offering Christ to people, we have to make sure that we are offering him in such a way that they want to follow him. Like Paul said, I preach Jesus and him crucified. I preach nothing to you. I don't have any enticing words. I don't have any words of man's wisdom, but I preach unto you Jesus and him crucified. I'm, I keep getting a, a low Wi-Fi message. Is this freezing? on anybody's end. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Is it translating properly? Let me know in the comments if it's translating. Okay. Because I keep getting a low um, Wi-Fi signal and I'm not sure if it's freezing or anything like that. So you guys can let me know in the comments if you guys, if it's good, you can hear it. What? Yes. What? Yes. You can hear it. Yes. It's okay. Thumbs up. Okay, so it's good. All right, because on my end, I keep getting this signal and I'm looking at the Wi-Fi like it's, is it working or anything? Okay, so there's a difference when we are begotten of God and we are begotten of the flesh. God wants us to have an encounter with him that marks us. Type in the comments, I am marked by God. When Jesus met the disciples, when Jesus encountered um, people in the marketplaces, when Jesus encountered people, there was a noticeable difference in that encounter to the degree that they were transformed. The woman at the well met Jesus and she turned into a revivalist, an evangelist. She went and told this message of how he transformed her life, which sparked a revival in this town because of her experience with Jesus. So when I talk about a fatherless church, I am talking about a church that has not had an authentic encounter with Jesus because of the fog machines. God help me today. Because of the uh, music, because of the, the uh, culture in which we have created around the kingdom of God that uh, draws people into uh, activities, that draws people into uh, our aesthetics, our um, charitable contributions, what we do rather than who he is. So this marking, this encounter that people are having with Christ causes them to want to follow him, 
causes them to want to know him, to experience him, to have an authentic relationship with Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the firstborn among many brethren. So when we experience Jesus, we are getting so much. Our first encounter with the triune God, we are drawn in by the Holy Spirit. But our drawing in is to reveal Jesus Christ. So we have to have a solid understanding of the triune God. Type in the comments, the triune God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And we have to understand the three in their respective roles as it relates to the kingdom of God. When we understand this, we are able to move in maturity and in levels of maturity in within our, um, our relationship to the kingdom of God. Type in the comments, I want to grow. First, um, we have to understand God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit. And this is a simple version of the triune God. God, the father is the source. Jesus is the one that everything passes through because of his sacrifice, because of his intercession, because of his, um, um, uh, Finish, because of the finished work of the, on the cross, everything that we receive from the Father passes through the Son, and the Holy Spirit is the one that achieves the will of the three. The Holy Spirit is the power behind the Trinity, not lessening or diminishing who God is or who Jesus is, but in the earth realm and in us, the Holy Spirit works in us both to will and to do of God's good pleasure. So all three are working together in unison, in agreement, in oneness to fulfill the will of God, the source. So when the will of God, the source is being executed, Jesus Christ is the mediator, the go-between, the intercessor, the one that is standing in the gap that has bridged the gap between us and God. In the fall of man, when Adam and Eve was in the garden, the insurrection in the garden brought a breach between God and man. Jesus Christ came back to uh, fulfill that breach or to uh, stand between as a mediator, as one that would be the sacrifice, the atoning sacrifice, the final sacrifice that would bring man back to God and give man mercy with God. In the Old Testament, we see the character of God wiping away whole towns because of sin, because of unrighteousness, because of things that they had done that was offensive to God. So God would say, all right, I'm doing away with them all. Let's find somebody to start this thing over with. God could have started um, all over just as he did in the beginning, but he looked for a remnant. And in um, Noah, he found um, righteousness and he began to start over when God um, first flooded the earth, he began to start over with Noah. And so what we're seeing now within the generations, within the body of Christ, we're seeing a lot of people that are mesmerized by the atmosphere of church, by the aesthetics of church, help me God, by the experience of church, by what church offers, how church is supposed to benefit them uh, rather than, and I'm not, I'm saying this as an umbrella, uh, umbrella not in general, um, as an experience to be had rather than to experience him. We look for more of how can we entice people unto God rather than just preaching Christ and him crucified. Paul, who was skilled, educated, he brought himself down to the most basic, simple message, which was Jesus Christ and him crucified. Paul didn't use his knowledge 
Paul didn't use his wisdom. He didn't try to use enticing words. He didn't try to use um, um, all these elaborate speeches. We have a lot of people that use all these enticing words and, 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 and use man's wisdom. But Jesus, but Paul wanted simply to let Christ be lifted high. Type in the comments, be lifted high. So what we're seeing in the body of Christ today, what we're seeing in the world today is a fatherless church. And what do I mean by fatherless church when I'm talking about Jesus Christ? The only way that we could get to God, the father who is the source is by way of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit who draws us in, the Holy Spirit who uh, draws our heart unto Jesus Christ and reveals Jesus, um, he will, as he reveals Jesus, Jesus then reveals the Father. So when Jesus is revealed, what is actually being revealed in our lives? What are we actually experiencing when we have an encounter with Jesus? We are encountering Jesus, the savior, Jesus, the mediator. We are encountering Jesus, the one that gave up his life, that surrendered, that was the ransom for our um, uh, uh, um, reconciliation back to God. He was the atoning sacrifice. He was the love of God personified in his life, death, and burial, and resurrection. He is the example in which we are to live and pattern our lives after. Everybody within the body of Christ, everybody within the kingdom of God. But we must understand that which is born of the flesh will be flesh. That which is born of the spirit will be spirit. So we have to make sure that if we are in the body of Christ, we are understanding our encounter with Jesus. We are understanding who Jesus is for us, what Jesus has done for us, and how to access the Father. No man can come to the Father but by Jesus Christ. So the Father is the one who is revealing identity. The father is the one who stamps us with identity. We look in scripture and we see this pattern where the father, we understand that the father God gave Adam his name. And then Adam, who was the first father of humanity, began to give identity to the animals. He gave identity to Eve. He gave identity to those that God would put under his authority. And within the body of Christ, we see where um, Zachariah was charged with giving identity to his sons. We see this pattern within the children of Israel. When God would promise a seed, he would actually tell the father and the mother what this child would do and what their name was. Within the name of the child was the identity of the child. You shall call his name Jesus and he shall do this. You shall call his name John and he shall do this. Um, many times in the church, we see that a lot of people have not had a real encounter with Jesus Christ that marks them, that changes them, that when the Holy Spirit is shed abroad in their hearts, their hearts and their spirit begins to cry, Abba, Father. So when we experience Jesus, when we experience Jesus in a real and tangible way, we are marked by God. We have such an experience with God to the degree that we enter into a love affair. We have such an understanding of what Jesus has done for us, in us, with us, and through us that causes our lives to begin to shift. 
the old people used to say this, Cynthia. They said, I looked at my hands and my hands looked new. I looked at my feet and my feet did too. Why did they have such that such an experience where everything looked new. When we are begotten of God, we are transformed, we are translated out of darkness and into the marvelous light. We pass when we experience Christ. We are awakened in our spirit man to God. We have a divine connection. We are transformed in as a new creation. The Bible says you are a new creation. The old things are passed away and the new has come. So what does that mean? We are changed on a metabolic level. We become a new class of being. We become those who are housing the spirit of God. Type in the comments, I am new. When you accepted Jesus Christ, hear me, you transform. You became a new class of being. You became a creature now that is different from when you were in the world. Before you accepted Jesus Christ, you changed on a metabolic level. Level, You began to be the begotten of God. So it is very important that we understand who Jesus is, what Jesus has done so that we never go back into the world, so that we never go back to sin. When we only have, oh my God today, when we only have an encounter with church, rules, regulations, religion, we don't understand Jesus Christ. We don't understand the triune God and we don't transform into the begotten of God. We are not translated out of darkness and into the marvelous light. We become those that are subject to masters. We are subject to rules and regulations regulation and religion rather than God. This is how we begin to see within the church body, share this video. If this is good to you, share this video to somebody that needs this message. When we begin to be transformed unto man, begotten of the flesh, we look to leaders. And when leaders fail us, we walk away from God. When leaders don't live up to the expectations that we have placed upon them, we leave God. We don't just leave the church, their building. No, we backslide and we leave God. This is a true sign that many in the body of Christ have not been fathered by God. They have not been begotten of God. They have not had an authentic experience with the Jesus that the Bible preaches about, with the Jesus that many in the Bible were transformed when they encountered him. They do not understand the triune God. They do not understand the sacrifice of Jesus. They do not understand the love of the Father. They do not understand the power of the Holy Spirit. So when we look to man as our source and as the one that we are patterning patterning ourselves after. And when we lift up man, man becomes an idol. And when man doesn't come through, we falter. We backslide. We are offended. We are uh, accusers of the brethren. We become uh, angry. We become those that say, well, I told you church wasn't this church was, of course, church isn't because church is just the gathering. When we say church, it is the gathering of those who are within the body, those who are within the body of Christ, those who are in the kingdom of God are those who are begotten of God, those who have been fathered of God, those who have been brought about by God, who have been translated out of darkness into the marvelous light, changed, hear me, on a metabolic level. When the old people said, I looked at my hands and my hands looked new, I looked at my feet and my feet did too. That is because they were transformed. They understood that something took place 
in them on a metabolic level that change their perception, that change how they view themselves, that change how they viewed others, that change how they view the world. They said places that I used to go, I don't go though, go there no more. People that I used to visit, I don't visit anymore. They knew that something had shifted, even if they couldn't even articulate it or explain it. Nicodemus said to Jesus, how can a man be born again? And this is the, the whole just of it all. In order to experience God the Father, we got to get past Jesus Christ. We have to understand and respect the cross. We have to understand the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. If we cannot do uh, that, Jesus said this, no man comes to the Father but by me. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the direction, I am the pattern, and I am the example. My God, type that in the comments. I am the direction, I am the pattern, I am the um, way, <laughs> the truth, and the life. I'm the direction, I am the pattern, I am the reality. My God, I am the direction, I am the reality, and I am the pattern. Jesus said this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the direction, I am the reality, and I am the pattern. This is what you should pattern yourselves after. This is what you should be like. This is how you should live. This is how you should look as a Christ follower. Jesus came into the earth, not just to save us, but to give us an example of what it looks like to be a child of God, what it looks like to live with the very presence of God in us, what it looks like to live as ambassadors and representatives of the kingdom. Jesus said the kingdom is here. The kingdom is now at hand. The kingdom is ready to move on the inside of you. Prior to Jesus and John's preaching about the kingdom and John preparing the way for Jesus Christ as his forerunner, the kingdom of God was um, not in man, but the kingdom of God came to be within us. The kingdom of God, righteousness, peace, and joy in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit came to dwell on the inside of us. So when we have an authentic encounter with Jesus Christ, what does that mean? It means that we understand, type in the comments, I understand Jesus. I understand what he has done for me. I understand the severity and the gruesomeness of his sacrifice. I understand the deep measures that God took in order to reconcile me and to save me from hell's flames. My God, to give me the life that he intended for me over 2000 years ago when he created Adam and Eve, to give me his original intent, somebody had to be the atoning sacrifice. Somebody had to fulfill this thing and he did it through Jesus Christ. One of the things that I'm understanding about this, Yolanda, is oftentimes we don't teach people the basics. In Deuteronomy chapter six, verse six through, I think it's around the ninth verse, he talks about committing themselves wholeheartedly to the commands. He's telling the children of Israel that you need to commit yourself to the commands of the Lord. You need to commit yourself to the teachings. You need to commit yourself to the things that I have said, basically to the word of God. Commit yourself. And then what I need you to do is teach your children. Type in the comments, teach your children. So he says, you need to teach your children these things which I have spoken unto you. In Deuteronomy, it was the commands of the Lord, which was the law, which was the logos at the time of this writing. He said, I want you to teach them all of these commands, all of these laws, all of these things that I have given you, which will save you and help you to remain set apart, will help you to remain in me, will help you to remain as my set apart ones. So he says, re repeat these laws to your children. 
Deuteronomy chapter six, verse six through nine. Repeat them, he says, again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home. This is the severity of the word of God, which is the final authority in the life of the believer. He says, talk about them when you are at home, when you are on the road, when you are going to bed, when you are getting up, tie them to your hands and wear them on your foreheads as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So what is he doing? He's setting the word of God before them. He's saying, in order to be my people in the world, because the world was given over to the enemy and he has control of the systems of the world. He is the God of this world system. So God is giving the children of Israel the strategy and the blueprint on how to remain in him. At this time, they had the laws, but now we have the full counsel of God within the logos of God. And we also have the rhema of God, which is the expressed word of God to you, the vocal word, uh, which comes uh, in dream form, prophecy in different uh, areas. So he's saying, I want you to train up a child, train these children up in the way that they should go. Proverbs 22 and six. So when children are born, children are given this identity by fathers, right? So what we see in the world, we see a whole lot of fatherless homes. We see a whole lot of people that have not had discipline. We see a whole lot of broken homes, single homes, homes where, um, uh, or should I say within the last several years, but I'll tell you what I believe the Lord is doing by prophetic um, uh, revelation. We've seen a lot of single parent homes. We've seen a lot of broken homes where children did not have fathers. We're seeing a lot of uh, lack of consequences within children. This is where children can go or um, even adults who have not had an experience with fathers, who have not experienced um, a healthy living environment. They go into places and they blow things up. They go into shopping centers and they shoot things up. I'm an educator and I um, even dealt with children as young as three years old. And I seen where there was not a lot of accountability, where parents didn't give consequences to children, where there were no consequences for actions, even at a three-year-old level. There was no discipline. There was always deflecting. It was always the teacher's fault. It was always the administrator's fault. It was always these people's fault because there was no discipline and there was no correction. We have a lot of people within the world who are acting out of emotion, acting out of their own will without fear of consequences. When you see people who have been parented correctly, parented with a reverence, parented with instruction. You see where there's more discipline. You see where there's more training. You see where there's more of a solid foundation within the lives of those people um, on a whole, not saying that that's the blanket for everything, but Proverbs 22 and six tells us to train up our children in the way that they should go. What is this way that they should go? Now, I already told you that the father, I'm going somewhere. Type in the comments, she's going somewhere. The father would give identity to the children. So if the, if the father heard from God who this child is supposed to be, what their assignment is in the earth. That father is to train that child up in that assignment. We look at the Levites, the 12 tribes. All of the 12 tribes were given identity. All of the 12 tribes were given something that they were supposed to be over. Judah were, was the tribe of praise, music. Um, Judah went before war and Judah went to war with Israel because they understood the power behind praise. The Levite, the tribe of Levite, Levite were the tribes that were the priesthood. They were assigned the identity and the assignment to be those that served in the house of God. In fact, 
the other tribes were to take care of the Levites because the Levites didn't own property. The, the, and this is where we get the tithing because the Levites didn't own property. All the other tribes were to help support the work of the Levites. So they gave unto these tribes to, they gave unto the tribes of Levi, Levi so that they could execute their assignment and their identity in the earth. So within these tribes, the tribes of, uh, Israel, the 12 tribes, they were given assignments within their respective identities and everybody within that tribe will fall in line. If you were a son of a priest, you would translate and matriculate into the priesthood. So children were given that identity. This is so-and-so, this is Jesus. This is what he's going to do. This is John. This is what he's going to do. This is Samuel. This is what he's going to do. So God would give the identity and it was the assignment. Even kings, their children were supposed to be the next king. They were trained in the priesthood. And we see that today with the monarch, with um, the queen and uh, now not the queen, but the king in England. We see that lineage where the next heir, those who are within the royal family, know that they are serving the crown. That is their highest um, calling. That is what they do. They serve the crown, the one that's next in leadership. They are being groomed. They are being trained in the way that they should go. Okay. So what does this mean? This means as parents, we need to be asking God, what is his plan for our children so that we can train our children in the way that they should go? So when we have identity, when we understand who we are, we are receiving from the father everything that we need to fulfill our assignment. Let's backtrack. When we come to Jesus, we know that Jesus is the savior of the world. The Lord said to David, and David was speaking about the Messiah. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. So when God, uh, when the Holy Spirit draws us to Jesus and he reveals Jesus unto us, what is he revealing? He's not only revealing Jesus, but he's revealing our sinful state and our need for a savior. He's revealing how we're living beneath our privilege so that we can step into the kingdom of God and receive the full benefits of the cross. In order for us to translate to sonship, we are a fatherless church, meaning we have not had authentic encounters with Jesus Christ. In order to get to the fatherhood of God, hear me, we have to deal with the cross. We have to have an authentic experience with the Jesus of the Bible. We have to have an authentic experience with our sinful state. We have to have an authentic experience with the revelation of Jesus's sacrifice. We can't get to the father, except we have the dealings of the cross, except we respect what Jesus Christ did. What does that look like when we say we respect what Jesus Christ did? When we respect what Jesus Christ did, we don't go back into our sinful state. We don't fall willingly and knowingly into sin because of the power of what the Christ does. We don't stay in a posture of sin. I'll give you uh, three examples. The examples that I came up with as I was preparing is Judas, Joseph, and Peter. Write that down. Judas, Joseph, and Peter. Destiny travelers. We have to understand Judas who was a disciple of Jesus Christ that never got promoted to apostleship, he allowed Satan to enter him, being the one that would be the catalyst for Jesus's sacrifice, which was already ordained. However, Judas was remorseful about what he did or should I say sorrowful and saddened about what he did to Jesus. But there was never that 
repentance to the degree that he got back in his place, right? When we understand Jesus' sacrifice, we understand that we can come boldly to the throne to receive mercy, to receive grace, to get back in position. David, who was a man after God's own heart, he sinned, he faltered, he fell, but he knew how to get back in position with God. He knew that in God, he could come and be clean. He knew in God that he could stand in his position as God's chosen, as God's son. He had a heart posture of sorry, uh, of, 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 of repentance that changed his mind concerning the things that he has, he had experienced, the things that he do, ha, had done. Peter, Peter experienced um, the same thing when he denied Jesus. Peter denied Jesus, but got back in position. Jesus told Peter this, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. He's desired to separate you. He's desired to cause you to fall off, Peter. But I have interceded for you. Jesus was already acting in his um, posture as intercession, intercessor. He was interceding for Peter. He said, I have prayed for you that when you are converted, you will strengthen your brethren. So Peter needed to be tested, but he also said that, Peter, you're going to come back. So when you are strengthened, I want you to now do this. So Peter got back in position in his repentive state. He didn't stay in that sorrowful state. He didn't stay in that state of lowness. So when we do fall, this is how we know we have a real authentic encounter. We know the love of God. We know the love of God that we can come back to the father and get back in position to fulfill our destiny here on earth. But I also want to point out Joseph, my God, how Joseph was in Potiphar's house and Joseph, who was the dreamer, Joseph had a relationship with God, but when enticement came, when uh, Potiphar's wife tried to seduce Joseph, tried to get Joseph to commit adultery. Joseph began to declare this thing. I cannot do this thing against God. Joseph had had an experience with God that marked him to the degree that he understood what it meant to offend God. When we have an authentic encounter with Jesus, we understand what sin does. We crucify the Lord afresh. We go back on him. We get it out of alignment with him. We disrespect what the cross has done. We uh, don't take his sacrifice lightly. It reveals our love for him. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands. So when we're having a problem keeping the commands of God, when we're having a problem staying uh, free in our love walk, when we're having a problem with the sin nature, there is a love issue that is happening. There is a perception of who Jesus is that is distorted. So when we don't have an authentic encounter with the Jesus that the Bible speaks about, we may be having a skewed experience with what the cross offers, why we have the cross, the, the uh, seriousness of the cross, why the cross had to happen. So we're not having authentic encounters with Jesus, which is why we're having an experience experiencing a fatherless church. We can't get to God except we understand and, and embrace the cross of Christ. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of you out before my father. No man gets to the father, but by Jesus Christ. So if I am not respecting Jesus, come on. If you respect what Jesus has done for you, type in the comments, I respect him too much. That's what Joseph said. I respect what I have too much. I respect my new hands too much. I respect my new understanding too much. I respect this newfound favor, this newfound revelation, this newfound freedom, this newfound love, this newfound joy, this liberty that I have in God. I respect it too much to fall to my carnal nature, to allow 15 minutes of enjoyment to separate me from what I have. 
when we have an authentic encounter with God, with Jesus Christ, we can experience the sonship of God. We can experience the love of God. And when leaders fall, when leaders falter, we can still have that connection with God. This is what Apostle Paul began to tell those that he was writing to and those that he was leading. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. Cynthia, what Paul was saying is, you need to know what who Christ is too. If you don't know who Christ is, what Christ has done, you will not know if I'm following him. Jesus. So J Paul is saying, I'm preaching to you, Christ. And if you see anything in my life that looks contrary to what I am preaching, I welcome you to disassociate yourself. Mm, my God, I welcome you to leave my church. I welcome you to reject my letters. I welcome you to disassociate yourself with my ministry. He said, as I follow Christ, as I show you the pattern which I am preaching, as I show you the pattern which Christ gave to us, which Christ told us to preach, as you see that in my life, that's how I want you to follow me. This is the command that Paul began to write about. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. So whoever in your life is not exemplifying the nature of Christ, why do we follow people when they're not experiencing or when we're not experiencing Christ? One, we don't know him. My God, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We don't know Christ. Mm, my God. Mm, Jesus. Jesus. Okay, okay, okay. The, the leaders aren't preaching Christ. They're preaching feel-good messages. Jesus. They're not teaching who Christ is. They're not discipling people unto Christ. Mm. When we follow people and we give excuses for what we're not seeing in Christ, for what we're not seeing, which is the pattern of Christ, we're saying, it's okay. We're going to motivate you to change. No. Where is your repentance? Where is your recoil? Where are you coming back in humility? Where are you sitting yourself down to get taught? Mm, my God, today, you need, you need to go back to the cross yourself. We cannot have sonship without respect of the cross. You can never get to the father and experience what's in the heart of the father, experience your destiny, experience the abundance that the father has for you, the dreams of God. The, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost type fire because I know if this is blessing me, I know it's blessing you. You'll never experience the thoughts of God. He says to Israel in Jeremiah 29 and 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I know the plans. I know what's in my mind concerning you. I know what's in the heart of the father. Jesus tells, Jesus tells, um, tells us that I tell you what I hear the father say. The Holy Spirit says, I'm not going to testify on my own accord, but I'm only going to tell you what I hear. Who is Holy Spirit listening to? Holy Spirit is the spirit of God, the nature of Christ living on the inside of us. And just as Jesus walked with and taught the disciples and guided the disciples, we have the Holy Spirit of promise uh, on the inside of us doing the same thing and giving us what Jesus is revealing unto him. My God, they are never acting in their own. So here it is. If you have not gotten past Jesus, Jesus is not telling you what the father is saying. Jesus is only dealing with you with what he on his in his station. <laughs> you need to understand the savior. You need to understand salvation. You need to understand sanctification. You need to understand who you are in the kingdom of God in order to move to sonship. You need to understand the, the uh, importance of holiness, separation, the new creation that God has made you to be. So when we understand this, we can then move into the dreams of God. We can move into the maturity of God as his sons and daughters and representatives in the earth being those who are born of God, just like Jesus was. 
He was the firstborn among many brethren. Jesus had to grow in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man, just as we have. Same way. Jesus had to go through all the channels that we had to go through. He had to learn who he was in God. He had to learn even when he wanted to jump the gun in the temple when he was 12 years old and, and, and he was there caught teaching and his mother and his father, he was supposed to be with their company, but they had started traveling and Jesus wasn't with them. And they went back to the temple and Jesus responded, did you not know I will be about my father's business? But here it is. He went back, the scripture tells us, and he submitted to his mother and his father. He submitted unto their authority until it was time for him to emerge. He had to learn submission and honor just like us. So when we are trying to have a church that is fatherless. It is because the church has not had real encounters with Jesus. We talk about everything else. And I'm not saying that every church is this way. In an umbrella, in, in general, we want the prophetic. We want mysteries. We want signs and wonders. But here it is. We got leaders within the last five, six years that have publicly done things on social media that we should not see in leadership. Why is this? Because we have not had real authentic encounters with Jesus and real process. Jesus. <sighs> because when we understand what the cross has done, we do what Joseph did. We flee. We flee fornication. We flee those things that will cause us to grieve the Holy Spirit, that will cause us to offend God, that would cause a breach between this newfound joy that we have, this newfound experience, this newness of life that would drag us back into bondage when we fully understand the cross. We can move on to fatherhood. We can move on to sonship and understand who we are as sons. We are trying to give authority. We're trying to teach people in the prophetic, but have people really have, an, have had an authentic encounter with Jesus Christ of the Bible. I'm not talking about your leaders because when leaders fail, how do, how do the people respond? Do they backslide? Do they hang on to Jesus? How do they respond to Jesus when leaders fit? Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Paul said, I preach Jesus Christ and him, him crucified. My, my message is simple. I'm not trying to exalt myself. I'm not trying to give you what I think in my worldly wisdom with all my education. Paul said, my words are simple. Jesus was crucified. He hung. This, this death was gruesome, but there is hope. Paul's message was Jesus. How are we giving Jesus? How are we being ex an example of Jesus? Here it is again. <laughs> this whole doctrine, try Jesus, but don't try me. That is a doctrine of demons. And we're listening to these type of things. Listen to the things that y'all listening to. The songs that you listen, even the worship songs. What are they saying? Are they theologically sound? Are they pushing you towards the flesh? Or are they pushing you towards living life in the spirit? There's so much more that I'm going to share about this on Friday. We're going to really expound this and talk about the fatherless church and what we are seeing. We're seeing leaders now. I, I remember in 20. 15, when the Lord began to really grow me in uh, the prophetic and the Lord told me to come onto social media and I began to share things and um, a step out into who I was in God. And he began to um, give me messages and um, I shared about what some things that were coming and the Lord began to give instruction to tell the leaders to repent. He said, leaders, repent, come back to me. 
But then after that, we begin to see a fall of leaders. We begin to see leaders displaying characteristics that were not Christ. But then we get begin to see the body championing, uh, getting behind the lack of um, holiness and characteristics of Christ. Church, we got to wake up. When we have an authentic, authentic experiences with Christ, we know him. Paul told these guys, Paul wrote and said, follow me as I follow Christ. So if I don't know Christ, I'm going to follow leaders blindly because I don't know who Christ is. Get in the word. Know Christ for yourself. Teach it to your children. Make sure your children know who the triune God is and what they have done for you. If you don't get in the word, you will follow people blindly. Am I saying this is for the church at large? No. Am I saying that every church is this way? No, I love the body of Christ. What I am telling you is this. We have a church that is fatherless, a church that has not gotten past sin at large. We have... You know, we have seen in the world where, and I'm going to talk about this Friday, what the Lord is showing me, the migration that's that's happening and how he's bringing his children back to him, how he's purifying. The last few years, the Lord has been purifying the body. And what we're getting ready to do it, to see is the changing of the guards, which is already, mm, it's already happened in the realm of the spirit. It is just going to, manifest in the flesh in the next 10 years we're going to see leaders emerge who have the heart of God who love God and love his people to usher in the greatest revival and harvest of souls why is this because leaders have not been processed fully to the degree that they are emerged in full sonship which they have gotten past Jesus Christ Otherwise, we wouldn't see flesh on display. Otherwise, we wouldn't see leaders cussing out the congregation. We wouldn't see a lot of these things because there is a real submission to Jesus Christ. Just like Joseph said, I cannot do this thing against my father. He wasn't talking about his daddy, his earthly father. He was talking about his heavenly father. He did not want to sin to offend him. So within the next couple of years, even as we have seen the, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, the single parent families, how that has been um, the theme. God is getting ready to restore marriage. The enemy has really waged a war against marriage to steal the seed of God, to stop humanity from fulfilling its divine assignment to be fruitful and multiply so that God's will can be manifested in the earth. So he's tried to disrupt family, alter identity, but God is restoring marriage and bringing marriages back to a wholeness. And he's going to begin to lift up pure marriages that are truly power couples moving in agreement with him to usher in revival in homes where we're going to see reconciliation. We're going to see divorces that have taken place, God bringing restoration and those couples getting married again. Why is this? Because not only is God going to take back his church, my God, but he's going to begin to take back the homes. Jesus, Jesus. We're going to see revival on so many different levels. We're going to see revival in marriage. We're going to see revival in identity. We're going to see revival in homes. What we are seeing, don't you think that all of this stuff that we're seeing in the world, God is not moving. He is moving. He is pulling out those who have been tried in the fire, those who have given him a yes through Extreme training who have his heart, who have his people in their hearts, who love his people, who know who they are, 
who have been fully processed by him to rise up and live this thing out as an example to those who will come behind them. Those who will say, I'll follow you as you follow Christ. God is restoring the church back to himself where we've seen idolization of leaders and where we've seen leaders um, mishandling the sheep. God is restoring and resetting things into proper alignment for the harvest of souls. I'm not talking about church hopping and I'm not talking about people moving from church to church. What I'm talking about is revival of sinners coming into the body of Christ. People who have been far from faith, prodigals coming into the body of Christ. Why? Because they are being introduced to those who are following Christ. Does this, I'm going to talk more about this on Friday. Be with me at 715 on Friday, Central Standard Time. I'm going to talk more about the fatherless church that we are experienced for coaching and mentoring and books. You can go to my uh, website, touchdownsenterprise.com. Listen to me, destiny travelers. If you want to finish well, you better know who Christ is. The only way you will not be the blind leading the blind. This is what Jesus said to his disciples. This stood out to me in it. I was reading the word and the Holy Spirit um, had me brood over this scripture. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. <sighs> when the disciples were moving with Jesus and there were those that were preaching Jesus and they weren't lit, they weren't preaching Jesus, but they were leaders within the synagogues. And this, the disciples began to point out, well, they're not receiving what you say, Jesus. And Jesus's response was, don't worry about them. <laughs> My father is the one that's going to separate and then he said this about the people, the blind will lead the blind and they both will fall in a ditch. Listen to me. You have an obligation yourself. God is not going to say, oh, you know, um, these you were following so-and-so. And that's why you stayed in sin. That's why you didn't do what I called you to do in the earth. That's why you never fulfilled your destiny because you were following so-and-so Jew, Jew Jack pastor. He ain't going to say that. He's going to say, my sheep know my voice. In a stranger, they will not follow. He's going to say, I gave you the same word they had. I dealt with your heart, but you chose to reject me over man. Listen to me. If you ever in your life, need to know who Christ is. You need to know who he is now because deception is going to increase. And if Paul is telling his people in his day, follow me as I follow Christ. If I don't know who Christ is, how I know if you following him, Paul, <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? If I never read my word, if I never teach my children the word, how do they know what Christ looks like? How do they know what the way, the truth, and the life is? How do they know what the direction is? What the reality of living life in the spirit looks like? My sheep, he says, know my voice. Those who have been shepherded by me, those who have been begotten of me, they know my voice and they follow me. Hear me. Don't be discipled off of the flesh. Don't be, am I saying dishonor, leave? No, I'm not saying that. Am I saying the church, leave church? No, I'm not saying that. Don't let the enemy deceive you. What I am saying is you better have an authentic relationship with Jesus yourself. Just as Paul was following Christ, he was admonishing his people. You follow him too. But the pattern of you following me is I'm following him. So if you following him, I'm following him. We all going in the same direction. We're all looking the same. We all have unity in the spirit. But we must become those who respect the cross. 
What does that mean? When Jesus shows you where you're not walking in righteousness, right standing with God, that you're doing things that are offensive to Christ, offensive to the cross. When we go back into sin, when we live subpar beneath our privilege, that's if offensive to the cross. His, his death was so gruesome. His sacrifice was so valuable. Now, if I, and even when we look at the martyrs of our day, our time within the earth, how they sacrificed their lives for us to vote, how they sacrificed their lives for us to sit on a bus, how uh, people sacrificed their life for the freedoms People sacrifice their lives to establish what we have in the earth now. When we disrespect that, it's like saying, oh, I'm, I'm because of what you did. I don't really, I'm out of touch with that. I wasn't living during that time. I really didn't know who that person was. But because Jesus lives and because the Holy Spirit lives in us, we can, <clears throat> we can have an authentic relationship with him ourselves to experience him in a very real and tangible way. So respect the cross, respect what Jesus has done for you. Live free from sin. Keep saying yes to Christ. Ask him, is there any areas in my life where I'm not living up to who you say I am, up to what you have done for me? Remember, we got to work that out, that salvation. Work out your soul salvation <clears throat> with fear and trembling. Get all that stuff out of you. Let the Holy Spirit, who is the one that achieves the will of the Father, reveal to you every area where you're not submitted to God, every area of your life where it is offensive to God, every relationship. Let him vet you. Let him look at your life, scan your life, and see where you need to be um transform where you need to receive truth, where there is a new reality, a, a higher way of living, a higher way of being so that you can experience the full benefits of your relationship with, with God, the full benefits of sonship so that you can receive what is in the heart of the father, the destiny of God, what is written about you in your book. I love you so much. We're going to talk more about this, the fatherless church. Type that in the comments, the fatherless church. We're going to talk more about this, Destiny Travelers, on Friday. Thank you all for joining. I appreciate your time. Thank you for those that have shared, those that have sent stars. I appreciate it. It helps me to continue to do what I'm doing. Your support, those who support the ministry that God has given me, those who I coach and mentor both in group and um, individually. Thank you for um, trusting me to walk with you in an intimate way. I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you with my love, I pray that this message and this teaching has empowered you while you're en route to destiny. I love you with the love of the Lord. Have a wonderful Wednesday. <laughs>